Hello and welcome to the National Squash Center at KL Sports City in Bukit Jalil for more squash action. It's the women's singles that will be starting us off today. We've got the women's singles semi-final one and two, followed by the men's action. It's also the semi-finals one and two. This first match is going to be taking place between Sneha Sivakuma of Singapore and Rachel May Arnold of Malaysia. So it's a causeway showdown between the two nations that have done incredibly well. Let's just take a quick look at their route to this stage so far. As we see Sneha edging out the Philippines, Isabel Gotua, 3-0 to get her place in the semi-finals. Rachel going up against the Thai player. A similar result. Winning by three games to make sure that she makes her way to the, the semi-finals, inching her way to that gold medal match. That's what she's doing. The number 52 ranked player will be keen to exert her experience over a very young Sneha Sivakumar. She's only 16 years old. In the Garden City, she's going to be looking to do as much as she can Ladies to put a dent like in Rachel's stride. The Malaysians, of course, are famous for their squash. They've done so well. And let's face it, when you've got the likes of eight-time world champion Nicole David in your ranks, well, you know that the nation means business, especially in this game. Nicole, of course, not playing at this edition of the SEA Games. She decided to step aside in order to let a younger squad come through and gain more experience, especially at these regional games. See the players Thank warming you, up for in this gorgeous court. Royalty in the midst then. Half time. So we've got Malaysia in the black, Singapore in the red and white. Practicing their driving shots there. Now let's just do a quick recap of how the games have gone so far in the squash competition. Well, Malaysia has been raking in the golds. They've walked away with three so far in the men's doubles, women's doubles and mixed doubles. But it's Singapore who's claimed the men's and women's jumbo competition. They've done exceptionally well. Also important to note though that Snea has already won a bronze medal in the women's doubles. So congratulations to her. She played alongside Aoyong Waihan Yihan from Singapore as well. But Rachel May Arnold, the right-hander, has won gold in that same event. So it's the women's doubles that she claimed. And I'm pretty sure she's going to do everything she can to make sure that she makes her way to the next round. those of you that have been keeping up with the games you'll know that Malaysia the host nation has been doing exceptionally well so far 88 gold medals to their name placing them on top of the standings at the moment 
Vietnam coming in second at the moment with 50. Thailand have just overtaken Singapore with 48. Singapore with 47 at the moment. Thailand not having quite as strong a show. There we go, we do the racket spin to determine who will serve first. And it looks like it'll be Singapore. The players will take their final breather. Quick pep talk with their coaches. As they stand by for the first semi-final in the women's singles. Rachel May currently ranked 52. She's 21 years old. 15 seconds. Born and bred here in Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> this lovely glass court. Kuala Lumpur 2017-29 Sea Games. Women's single event semi-finals. Rachel May Adenov, Malaysia, to serve Sineha Sivakuma of Singapore to receive best of five games level. That's Malaysia to serve. Stroke to Arnett. One love. Rachel dominating the tee at the moment, making it a little bit hard for Singapore. Just so close to the wall, they're getting these shots straight down. Down. Oh. Head out. One hole. Now to serve. Nice driving shots. And up. Two one. So much power goes into them to make sure that the ball is able to down. make its way down all the and way up. to the back Whoa. wall. So far, two downs. Down. Three downs. Three, two. From Rachel. She'll want to avoid making careless mistakes like that. because otherwise she's throwing a lot of dominance on court. You see how she's just staying put in that center position. And up. Three all. Down. And out for three. Down. Down yet again. 5-3. The young Sneha will be buoyed by these errors. You can see it, she's growing slightly more confident. Ah. Not quite able to get down to the ball. See, there's a marked difference between the strength and power that goes into these shots. Nice. 
Rachel seems to have found a groove. Coming back to equalize. Straight into the corner there. Yes, let. Looking for a let. There we go. Six five. So when it is deemed that the other player has obstructed the course of play, a let will be awarded. As is the case of that last point. She should please. Yes, left. Six five. It is a tight space, and you do have two players who are running furiously around each other. It's a fast and furious game. Ciao. Seven, five. Down. And up. Six, seven. Straight into the corner. And out. A six. Oh. Position, please. Yes, left. A six. Just tripping over each other's feet there. Tight to the wall from Sneha. That double bounce not just quite enabling nice. Sneha to get there in time. Squash really is a 360 degree sport. You can't blink for a moment. And you've got to have eyes at the back of your head. Especially when the balls go to the back wall. Lovely slow balls there from Sneha. She just changes the pace. Oh. That dead ball just. 10 6. Good ball. The red box. Rachel will be serving for the game. One game to learn. So, after a shaky start there for Rachel May Arnold of Malaysia. The first five points for Singapore were a result of all of her down balls, but she found her groove. And it's Sneha who was left chasing, trailing five points there at the end of that first game. You just see the cool composure 
of Rachel as she attacks every single ball. But she's going to have to minimize each of those down balls. And there we saw that collision. That seemed to rattle Sneha just a bit. So, the first game ends in the Malaysians' favor. 11-6 to Rachel May Arnold. She will be looking to wrap this up in three games, if she can. Squash is known to be one of the most intense sports there is. Great for working out. Gets your heart rate pumping. But it is a fast-paced game. You can see from the sweat that is dripping off of these players at the moment. But they are putting in the hard work. Leads one kick to love. Just warming up the ball there. Squash balls are hollow on the inside. Level. And when the ball heats up, that's when you start putting the bounce. Down. Yeah. Head out, one love. Oh, cheeky little ball there from Head Rachel. Out, one Just slowing it down and putting it out of Sneha's reach. the wall. Sneha wasn't going to get that. Two, one. Yeah. Three, one. Four. Two. Oh. Head out. Two, three. Down. And up. 4-2. Sneha didn't have any downs in that first game, but it seems like she's off to a bit of a shaky start here in the second. And up. 3-4. Rachel is starting to creep away here. Six, three. That's another one for the Malaysian. Yeah. Rachel, who's just 21 years Seven, old, is the three. sister of Delia Arnold. Another renowned Malaysian player who's ranked within the top 20 for the past two years now. Nicole David, who's been blazing the trail. But 
she's not alone up there in the top rank <laughs> squash players from Malaysia Eight, three. Lob there from the Singaporean. Nine, three. Cross court play that. Nice hard drive. Straight down the radar. An even bigger margin here. Six points separate them. Changing the tempo and getting hold of that. And out, five, ten, Oh, just too quick and too far back. Eleven five then. It's another great result so far for Rachel Arnold. Who seems to be taking all this in her stride. Didn't let too many points escape her in the way of errors. And we see an inhaler there for Sneha. A pace of play. Looking like it's taking a toll on the 16-year-old. It also looks like she's got a bit of blood on her hand. As we see... That final point there, the ball just coming too far back. Now quite often a lot of players will take a bit of a rest or just be solely focused on the sea games, especially when they have big events like this coming up. But just earlier on in the month, Rachel was taking part in the World Doubles Championship. She reached the seventh place playoff, playoff there. So a great result to buoy her morale before going into the Sea Games, where regionally she ranks as one of the stronger players. That blood just dotting Snail's towel. The friction that you get, especially when you've got to deal with some of the lower balls or when you're tied up against that wall. Just a bit of skin that's come off there. Okay, okay, that's good. That'll sting slightly. We're just looking for. A plaster just to cover that up and make sure that we don't have any blood on court. Never a nice thing. But it would also make it a little bit slippy. Speaking of slippy, it seems like the court issues have been resolved. Players were complaining that they were a little bit slippy. 
in the lead up to the games, but it's looking good at the moment. We get a plaster applied on the snail's figure. So you wonder, just in that positioning, will that be affecting her finger mobility and her grip on her racket? Okay, here we go. In for the third game here. Other leagues to get to love. Love. Here we go. Rachel serving as we start. Uh, hand proving slightly troublesome for Sneha. And she misses that ball completely. You can hear the Singaporeans cheering just outside the court. They are trying to retain dominance of that tee, but yes, Rachel just too strong. You see it, she doesn't move out of the spot. Well, it has resulted in that let. She doesn't relinquish that spot. Now... There we go, we just saw that little drop shot, trying to force Rachel out of the tee, but it didn't quite work in her favour. And Rachel now leading 3-0. Down. Head up. One, three. <laughs> Sneha really trying to stay in that tee. And it looks like it's starting to work. Two errors allowing Sneha to now catch up. Oh, what a beautiful attempt there. A nice little drop shot to try and Head up. get Rachel on the move. Four, three. We're having a really tight two wall shot there. Stay are really trying to get those volleys to go back and over. Trying to force Rachel out of that T area. Down. Another error Four. allowing Singapore to draw even. Sneha really trying not to let this one go. If she does, it's over. Uh. How beautiful. And now five, four. Six, four. 
Bosnia looking a little bit despondent at the moment. Hopefully she doesn't let this affect her morale. She needs to just hang on. Oh, sent all the way back. Look at that shot, just a volley right over the head and she just couldn't get there in time. Rachel is quite the force on court as well. She's broader and taller than Sneha. Five, seven. It's fine. Snare's going to want to send this over to the other side. And it's Rachel that does that instead. Six, eight. The rest of the Singaporeans watching on. Hello. Of course, Samuel Kang will be in action Hello. later in the first semi-final for the men's singles event as well. Nine, six. Lovely return there from Sneha. Ten, six, match ball. Oh, Sneha just giving that away on that final ball. 11, six, 11, five, 11, six. 11-6, and 11-6. A brilliant result for Rachel May Arnold. Ranked number 52, she goes through to the finals in the women's singles representing Malaysia for the potential of another Ladies gold medal. Sneha, though, will have to contend with just her joint bronze in the women's doubles. As we take a look at the highlights of this match, you could just see Rachel dominating the tee throughout the entire match, forcing Sneha out of the way, keeping control. That point there, Sneha celebrating just when she was able to force Rachel out. Some of the best points of Sneha's came from forcing an error and causing a down ball. But that point there just smacking the back wall with her racket. And with that bang, it ended her finals hopes. We've got another Malaysian in contention now in the semi-final two. It's Malaysia versus Philippines. Siva Sangari of Malaysia going up against Jamika Aribado of the Philippines. That's the world ranked number 61 going up against number 98 now it's taking place in just a few short moments do stay with us here media court bringing you all the highlights of the games as well don't forget 9 p.m is when we're held today at the games on octo sports so make sure you stay tuned for all of the action here coming to you courtesy of media court Oh, 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 oh,
aku bahagia Before we bring the players on the court, we'd like to uh, invite the referees up front and then introduce the referees. Could we have our referees up front, please? Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big hand to all of the referees for the second match. For the woman single category, Philippines versus Malaysia. Ladies and gentlemen, since the Swedish line of referees have uh, refereed both at the Asian and international levels, we are using the three referee system. Our uh, center referee is Andrew Zhang Wen, an ASF referee from China. Our right referee is Mohammad Kamal, a national referee from Indonesia. And our left referee is Galvindra Prashant, a national referee from Malaysia. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the second of the women's uh, single semi-finals match. These women have worked hard to be here in the semi-finals, so let's give them a round of welcome. Coming in from the right side of the court, from the Philippines, Jemika Arimado. Hello and welcome to the second semi-final here in the women's single squash. Jemika Arribado just being introduced now. Being marched out. Some interesting facts about Jenica. She's seated number three today. She's the Philippines national ranking is number one. The world ranking number 98. And she's the first Filipino to break into the top 100 world ranking. She's a singles broad medalist at the 2015 Singapore Sea Games, singles broad medalist at the 2016 Southeast Asian Squash Championship in Myanmar. She has a two-year-old daughter and she balances her time between professional squash and motherhood. From the Philippines, Jemika Arribado. And now, ladies and gentlemen, coming in from the left side of the court, from Malaysia, our very own Siva Sangari Subramanian. The Malaysian from Kedah. Coming in now, just 18 years of age. She's currently ranked Siva number Sangari 61. Number one. Her Malaysian national ranking is number four. Her world ranking is number 59. Yeah. 
She's a singles gold medalist at the 2016 Southeast Asian Squash Championship. Multiple winner of Asian Junior Championships. She was on the Malaysian team that emerged runners-up in the recently concluded World Junior Team Championship. Has represented Malaysia at both the junior and senior level at Asian and World Individual and Team Championships. That is she a long list of achievements TSA there. She eight titles back to back and counting. An invisible achievement in the professional circuit. Ladies and gentlemen, from Malaysia, Sima Sangri Supramanian. So it looks like this Ladies is going to be the team will be coming up in a few minutes a battle of the game. titans. And one more time, ladies and gentlemen, give a big hand to Jemina Aripada from Philippines and Sima Sangari from Malaysia. Sima Sangari had beaten Indonesia's Nisa Fadila for her spot in the semi-finals and Jamaica had beaten Singapore's Sherilyn Yang. Both of those results were 3-0. Siva Sangari's highest ever world ranking actually took place in March earlier this year. It was a ranking of 47. I'm sure she's going to make her way back up there very soon. And she'll be looking to add a gold medal to her bag. Of course, if she beats Jamaica, it's going to be an all Malaysia final. Between Rachel and herself. Must always be tough. When you're going up against a fellow countryman. You want them to do well. But at the same time, you also want to do your best. And the hunt for gold is always key here. In any games, in any competition, basically in sport. Siva Sangari. Still has a lot of youth on her side, as does Jamaica. She's 23 years old, born in 1993 in Taguig City in the Philippines. Like the announcer said just now, she's the first Filipino to ever break into the top 100. These athletes each about the same sort of height, but it's actually Jamingo who's a little bit lighter and will have a little bit more speed on her, which of course in squash. It's of utmost importance. You need to be quick, you need to be able to get down low. And as a result, injuries do ensue. And as you can see, Siva Sangari taped up there on the elbow. Of course, with the force and the power used as they exert with every single smash of that racket. That impacts their joints greatly. Hopefully that elbow won't be a problem here in this match. And by the looks of it, it's not going to be as straightforward of a match as that first semi-final. The fans are having a great time here. We have seen them come out in their droves, especially here in the weekend. Traffic jams are plenty here in Kuala Lumpur. Kuala Lumpur is already famous for its traffic, but even more so now that the games have been here. People have been coming out, they've been watching the sports, especially because Malaysia has been doing exceptionally well. 
They've been raking in those gold medals. And if Siva Sankari makes it through, Malaysia will be guaranteed another gold in the women's singles event in squash. The Bukit Jalil Complex has hosted a ton of sports. One of the key venues for swimming as well as for diving. And don't forget the closing ceremony will be taking place at Bukit Jalil as well. In the National Stadium. That will be taking place on Thurs on Wednesday. Part. Malaysia will also be celebrating Part. our Independence Day, Madeka. And hopefully celebrating a whole host of gold medals. They're going to be looking forward to staying on top of the medal tally all the way through to the end. Alrighty now, it's the final break as our two athletes stand by. More tape. Oh, a shoulder issue there for Jamaica. And an elbow and forearm issue for Siva Sangari. Although the tension doesn't look quite as great on her tape, so it looks like that might just be for support. As opposed to actually taping up a problem. There is a bit more tension just wrapped right over the top of those belts through to the scapula. It might be an issue with the rotator cuff. Big inhale there from the Filipino. Of Malaysia to receive by Sofarke Lobo. The ball is good to go, and so are these ladies. As we start the second semi-final match between Siva Sangari and Jamika. Good drives, nice and close to the wall. Changing the tempo there, Jamaica. A lot more movement in this match between the two players. Bit more evenly matched between the two of them. Him. Taking it in turns there on the tee. No one person really dominating. Stroke to Mal Sabaramiki. Hand out to one. No let there because Jamaica was out of the way already. No lag. Three one. Go. Three one. Uh, silly mistake there from the Filipino. Four one. Lovely how she just moves out of the way just by gliding her body. Yes, lad. Four one. <laughs> he 
these two look like they're dancing around each other. Graceful sport squash. Sweaty, but very graceful. Five one. Stevenson Gurry taking a steady lead here early on. Nice volley. Just dropping the ball there, putting it out of Six reach. With Jamaica. We now trailed by five points. Seven Just out of reach of Jamaica. Did you see her stretch for that ball? Smash down that lovely reach down. But just not enough. Stroke to our battle. Hand up. Pull back. Just obstructing the play there. And Sivison Gary wrapping it up 11 2. What a superb way to start the match for the Malaysian. I thought it was going to be a little closer than that, but Sivison Gary staking her claim on this one early on. Jamika shaking her head in disappointment and a little bit of disbelief. Not quite sure what went wrong there. It was taking her toll and then she just couldn't quite find her groove in the game. Reaching but missing those balls as they went straight back onto the back wall and dropping down into the neck. Even managing a smile, Sivasangari has definitely got the upper hand in this match. 18 years old. But she's got the makings of a champion here. The World Junior Championship in New Zealand. She reached the quarterfinals recently that was just in July but looks like she's improved on her game and she's really bringing it here Sobra Minin, Liz Wange Gola, Lava. Here we go. Second game. Starting slow. As they pick up the pace now. A lovely lob there. And now you can see 
Sivasangari staking her dominance over that T area. For the first time, Jamaica leading now. Yes, sir. Two lock. Four. Wasting that opportunity One, there. A lot of power in these shots. Jamaica not happy with that. You're passing the interference and hitting the ball. She's contesting it. Please, back to call. Back to call, please. As we take please. another look at that. And the Philippines not happy with that judge's call. Pull off. You can hear it from their coaching team as well. And it seems like this has rattled Jamaica. But will she let it affect her for the rest of the game? Doesn't look that way. Stroke to Sabarin Lini. 4 2. Left side. Let's see the Sangari to serve now. And down. 5 2. Jaminka needs to keep her head in the game if she wants to win this one back. She only scored two points in the last game. She'll want to do better than that this time round. Oh, another down. Six, two. Standing across to the sides. Ah, flashing with the wall, too tight. And Jamaica now scores more points in this game than she did in the last. Question is, can she claw back and overtake the Malaysian who is currently leading by three? Ball drops dead. Malaysian just needs three more points. But Jamaica is not going to give up that easy. Patiently waiting for it to come off the back wall there as she tries to lob it over. Oh! 
Even Steve Sangari applauded that point. You can see the sweat glistening on her arms. A lot of hard work going on in this course at the moment. The number one player from the Philippines is slowly trying to come back here, but it's game ball for Sivasangari as she seals it. Jamaica will have one more chance. It's not going to be easy. And that contested point now will have rattled her. There you go. 11-2, 11-5 to Siva Sangari from Malaysia. Ranked number 59. There you go. As you can see, the Philippine officials are really not happy with that call. And we'll take another look at the plays here. Some great reaches from Jamaica, but just too short. And that was it. That was the point. And the judge saying that Jamaica obstructed play and got in the way. Jamaica not happy with that. Could that have been the turning point for her if she had won that point? Well, we're about to find out if she has what it takes. to come back in this third game. She will do whatever she can. Winning bronze in this event in Singapore in 2015, she will want to go one better. And she'll be guaranteed of that if she can make it through. That's a big if. Sapamin in these two games to love. Love up. Tripping there, but managing to regain her balance. One love. Up. Too high. One up. One up. Oh, coming in hard and fast now. Jamaica. Oh, just down. Despite that reach. Hello, two off. Point for point here in this third. Citizen Gary really trying to just change the pace here. Oh. But it's Jamaica who manages to stop the ball. Yeah. 
Four on two. Down. From right side. Let's see this and Gary. And this is the longest that Jamaica has been able to hold the lead here. Can she keep it? Five two. Take this bike out, come on. Oh. Siva Sangari sent flying there. All right. Six, two. From right side. Tripping over Jamaica's leg. But it's a no let, and play continues. Oh. And now three six. Impressive rally from the two of these at the moment. I see all. Doctor Sabami, four six. Oh, running in there. She just makes it, but she's not going to be able to get the return. And it's Siva Sangari who is slowly inching back into this game. Going across four, and it's down. And now, seven five. Michael with a chance now. Four points is all she needs. Obviously, the Sangari is not going to let it go that easily. Oh. Another one just. Sneaking past. But now it's even between the two players. Jamaica has lost her lead. But does this mean she's going to lose the match? This is her last chance to get back in it. Sivas and Gary's giving her a run for her money, I'll tell you that. This is turning out to be one of the longest rallies we've had so far today. And the point is going to go to the Malaysian after an epic rally. And the Malaysian takes the lead now, 8-7. to seven. And you can see that that has chipped away at Jamaica's confidence. Face to the wall. She doesn't know where to go. And she's losing it. One last opportunity. Siva Sangari trying to find that perfect shot to win this match by. Yes, luck. 
Turn seven. Match ball. We reset. Micah not letting go just yet. Oh. Siva Sangari has got Jamaica running all over the place. Can you see that dominance from the tee? Jamaica. However. Just managing to pip Siva Sangari to that. And you could hear the crowd applauding. They knew that that was brilliantly played. Another chance now for Jamaica to claw her way back. Oh, a lovely ball there, straight to the back wall off the side. Nine, ten, right ball. She had her. As it just dropped down into the neck. My turn, my ball. Jamaica knows it's close. She has the opportunity, but she has to keep her nerve. She cannot let this point go. And you can tell by the ferocity of these shots. Oh. What a heart stopping finish. Three love. Eleven two. Eleven five. Eleven nine. Wow, what a match. It took Jamaica a little bit of time to get into that one, but boy, did she give us a great third game there. Clawing back. She took the lead for the longest time, but then she clawed back Siva Sangari. And she was held at 10 points for the longest time by Jamaica as she pulled back point by point by point until she got to nine. But then she let it go. And it is going to be an all Malaysia final now for the women's singles. In that first game, it really did look quite evenly paced. But a couple of loose balls, and we saw that that first game went the way of Siva Sangari. And that point. So her running. That was really the tail of it, though. Super Sundari really dominated, especially through that second game. But it was in the third that we saw the true flair of Jamaica. She really made. Siva Sangari worked for her shots. For that final one, just a little bit too low. As we set ourselves up for a fantastic All Malaysia final, Siva Sangari going up against Rachel Arnold. It's going to be a stellar match, and that's going to be taking place tomorrow from 7 p.m. Malaysia now guaranteed gold and silver. In the women's singles. But what about the men? Well, we're about to find out. Semi final one and two coming your way, starting with Samuel Kang from Singapore going up against Malaysia's Mohammed Shafiq. For the next match, men single category, we have Singapore versus Malaysia. To all of the players, 
Please be stand by. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, let's give a big hand to Tim from Singapore and Malaysia. Set for the first of the two, the men's singles semi-finals. Before we bring the players on, allow me please to invite the referees so that we can introduce them. Could we have the up referees up front, please? Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big hand to all the referees of the match. The referees for this match between Singapore and Malaysia. Our centre referee is Mary Lee, a national referee from Malaysia. 
Our right referee is Amos Yuen and ASF referee from Hong Kong. And our left referee has been here so many times. You'll get the same, the WSF referee from India. And now let's bring on the players. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first of the men's single semi-finals match at the 2017 Sea Games right here at Centre Court. Coming in from the right of the court, it's Samuel Kang from Singapore. So we're all set for the first semi-final in the men's singles event. Samuel Kang being introduced now as he comes to the front of the court. Samuel Kang of Singapore seated number four in the semi-finals. His uh, Singapore national ranking is number four. Singles runner-up at the 2016 Southeast Asian Squash Championship in Myanmar. Winner of the 2017 Philippines Open Squash Championship and winner of the 2017 Tanglin Club Open Jumbo Doubles Championship from Singapore, it's Samuel Kang. <laughs> His opponent, ladies and gentlemen, from Malaysia, Muhammad Shafiq bin Muhammad Kamal. The 21-year-old from Kelantan clearly a crowd favorite here today Mohammed Shafiq Mohammed Shafiq is seated number two his national ranking is number four his world ranking is number 97 at the Southeast Asian Sports Championship he was champion in doubles mixed doubles and team event he represented Malaysia in the Asian and World Individual and Team Championships. And an interesting fact is he loves eating chocolates. <laughs> From Malaysia, Mama Chafik did not want come out. Who doesn't love eating chocolates? But always nice to know. At least he plays plenty of squash so he can work off all those chocolates that he loves so much. Singapore and Malaysia. Samuel beat the Filipino Bogornia to make his way through and book his place in the semi-finals. Mohamed Shafiq beat the Thai player Punsiri to book his spot. Mohamed Shafiq had actually played alongside Ng Ian Yao, also Malaysia, the 19-year-old from KL, in the men's doubles. They got gold together. Doing a great job there. Mohamed Shafiq looking to book his spot an inch ever closer towards that gold medal. But speaking of his teammate for that men's doubles match, Ng Yin Yao, we'll be seeing him play in the next semi-final. In semi-final two, he'll be going up against Robert Andrew Garcia of the Philippines. Interestingly enough, Robert is actually the oldest men's player in this semi-final stage at 31 years old. Samuel is the second oldest, which says something about the Malaysians, who are young, fast, and furious. Mohamed Shafiq, just 21 years of age. Samuel is 26. You can see already, these two are ready to get at it. Samuel is actually based out in the US at the moment. At Princeton.
Mama Traffic though has been honing his craft in Kelantan where he was born. He was born in Kotobaru. Half time. Half time. Mama Traffic's actually a left hander as well. It'll be interesting to see how these two play together. One left, one right. Okay, these gentlemen warming up and getting ready on court now. The court is ready, the spectators are ready, the officials are ready, and the athletes just about finishing their warm-ups here on court. Of course, the women earlier on had a little bit more time being first up. But such is the nature of the game, so the guys will get their turn to warm up the ball and themselves in anticipation of what should be a cracker of a match. Much like semi-final one, it's Singapore versus Malaysia for the men's and the women's. And this is always interesting because it's not just about booking your place in the next round. This is also about bragging rights. But the Malaysians are historically a lot stronger in this sport. Even though the Singaporeans did win both the men's and women's jumbo events, it's the first time that the jumbo event has featured at the SEA Games. But squash itself has actually been included in the SEA Games since 1991. It was featured in 91 all the way to 2001. And then we had a little bit of a break and it was included again in 2005 and 2007 then excluded until 2015 and then here we are in 2017 with it back once again at the national squash center here in Bukit Jalil in Kuala Lumpur at the 29th edition of the sea games time just calling time now on the warm-ups As the players exit for the final few minutes. A wipe down, a drink, a bit of a pep talk, and then back straight in. For hopefully five games of intense action. Although that man there, Muhammad Shafiq, will hope to wrap it up in three. Sweatbands on. A crucial part of attire in squash just because of how much these players sweat. And trust me, you do not have a second to blink sweat out of your eyes. Kuala Lumpur 2017 men's single event semi final match. Samuel Kang Shang Wu from Singapore to serve. Mohamed Shafiq B. Mohamed Kamal of Malaysia to receive. Best of five games, level. Here we go. Yes, left. Level. It's Singapore that's maintaining dominance over the tee at the moment.
Samuel sending One ball left. just a little too high. One left. Just losing control of his racket and the situation there. Samuel just missing the mark. We're seeing some incredible speeds here. The fastest recorded serve of a squash ball was 281.6 kilometers per hour. Now, hang out. One, two. To down there from the Malaysian. the lunges there from Shafiq who's able to pretty much cover an entire half of the court just with his lunge and arm reach and the recovery as well very fast Softball there, making it difficult for Singapore to get in quite as fast. Nice fast return from Singapore there. Keeping it tight, there we go. I was just about to say, we're about to see someone send it wide. Shafiq pulling away early on in this match against Samuel Kang of Singapore. Very long rally here between the two players. That's going to wear them out. Yes, left. Left box. Four one. And it didn't even end in a point. So hard in the squash to make sure that you're getting out of your opponent's way. It's so close to the wall at the moment. Stroke to Kang. Hand out. 
Two four. Traffic not happy with that call. However, that point helping Singapore to claw back, but five two. Traffic responding. A very clever point there. Maybe to vent his frustrations at that earlier call. Low lunge, not quite long enough for Samuel. Seven two. The Malaysian getting into his groove and pulling away. Out. Okay, Point Three, and look at the different styles of play. Samuel tends to look back and see Five, seven. the direction where Shafiq is going to place his ball. Shafiq just feels it. He doesn't even look back at Samuel. Always eyes forward. It's almost like he knows where the balls are going to come from. Strip and flies up. Traffic pulling away again. And you could see the frustration in Samuel's eyes. Trying to claw back into this one. Oh. A sneaky little attempt there from Shafiq. But just on the line and down. You could hear it on the tin. Put a sweat on the court. As you can imagine, there would be. These guys putting in a lot of work. Beautiful shot there off the side wall. And Sam pulls back now. This is Samuel's first chance to get ahead in this game. Malaysian isn't going to make it easy for him. Send him all around the court. Each of the players taking their turn on the tee. And therefore in prime position. Nine 
Shafiq back in the lead then for Malaysia. Nice hard drive that. There is a certain beauty in the change in tempo. Ah. Well, those slow balls are always the tricky ones to catch, especially when your opponent is so close and right in the way on the forecourt. Game ball now. Malaysia with the chance to get this first game under wraps. Straight in the corner. Good Singapore support here. As you can hear them cheering from the stands. never easy when you're in somebody else's country and one of theirs is playing and fighting for a spot for the gold medal but if you're able to keep your composure you can be within a couple of points of sealing that first game can Samuel do it. Can he snatch it from Shafiq? Shafiq who has been dominant for most of this match. You can see now that they're fighting for dominance over that tee. And Shafiq not quite ready to relinquish it. Oh, some lovely fast balls. Bit of a change in tempo now. As we build up. Just out by Shafiq, which means that Singapore now holds up. And it's 10 apiece. Samuel will now have to work extra hard to pull two points ahead and seal this first game. Shafiq, who was looking so composed earlier, not looking quite as confident now. A couple of errors on his part have resulted in Singapore catching up. Stop! Oh, 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 oh. Decision on the pick up, please. Down. So it's, it's down. Play on. It's so bad. I've asked a decision already. All three so down. Does it matter? Play on. The matter is supposed to stand off. Hang out. Hot Ball called down, but it didn't quite look it. We had had a contest like that in the match between Malaysia and the Philippines in the women's singles earlier on, and it rattled Jamaica. One game to love. And we've seen a similar thing happening here, that final point. 
Just let go. Traffic exerting dominance, telling himself to maintain a little, to calm down, stay cool. But that was so close. Although looking at it, you had to say that Mohamed Shafiq was the more dominant player in that first game. His reach just a little better, his shots a little stronger. But Samuel had answers for him when he wasn't stumbling. It was just a few times. He just didn't quite have the reach to get to the ball in time. Just not quite the same length and breadth that Shafiq had. Final pep talks there for Mohamed Shafi. Here we go. Samuel with another opportunity to get back in. He's not going to let this one run 3 0. He's going to give it all he's got. But let's see if he's able to do that this time round. Come on, Leeds. One game to love. Love all. Love all. Here we go. Very high lob there, trying to get over the head of Shafiq. Short to come out. One love. All the spectators very intensely following the match. Samuel to serve and an opportunity. The age difference is five years here. Traffic, the younger player. Oh. Seems like Samuel's got some young fans here as he draws even with Shafiq. Left leg. Left box. Two on. Again. No, because the line is up. You could have taken Samuel unhappy. And it seems like 
The spectators also disagreeing with the referee, but the referee's word is final. Nice ball into the corner there from Samuel. Oh. Ball out. Samuel has tasted gold and he will want more. Already one gold medal in the bag. And all he needs to do is keep producing shots like that. Samuel taking the lead now. It's another one for Singapore. Traffic not quite looking so assured of himself at this point. And the left hander. That's some big and powerful shots. You could almost have forgotten that you were in Malaysia until he scored that point. As we take a look again. Just able to get there in time and Samuel not. Samuel not confident of that, but that was down. Almost because it double rebounded. You can see how bad Samuel wants this. But Shafiq. Has pulled even and overtaken. Traffic really good at nailing those shots down into the back corner. He's got his groove back too now, and he's pulling ahead. A dangerous thing to let him do. And Samuel just losing his nerve a little bit there, smashing it down, sending the ball right down to the floor. Court service, please. Can I have court service, please? The floor damp with sweat. 
and therefore a little bit slippy. Thank Understandably you. so. I mean, just look at how drenched right Traffic's shirt is at the moment. Right box. Eight, five. Well, that sweat is what victory is made of. Or at least that's what Shafiq is going to hope for. He's already one game up. But Samuel is doing everything he can. But it's not quite stopping the onslaught that's coming his way now. Two more points. For Shafiq to wrap up this game. a little more willing to accept the referee's decisions game ball now for Shafiq And it seems like this game is out of reach for Samuel. It's going to take him a miracle. But it's one he doesn't have. As Shafiq wraps up that second game. He was hoping to have wrapped up that first game in the same fashion. 12, 10, 11, 6. Shafiq looking a little more composed now. Just that coordination that Shafiq has. And you could see, especially after another call from the referee, you could watch Samuel just unravel his confidence and composure out of the window out of the court but he's going to need to refocus and get his hand back in the game it is best of five so this is his last chance to make an impression to snatch one back and to go all out He's smashing that ball around. He looks angry. He looks determined. But does he have the composure to snatch it back from the jaws of Malaysia? In the women's singles, we've already got a Malaysia 1 2 double. with the second semi-final between Malaysia and the Philippines. There is also a possibility of a Malaysia 1-2 in the men's singles as well. The 
Singaporeans roaring and applauding every shot that Samuel lands as he takes the lead here. This is a good start for the Singaporean. Soft ball there from Shafik as he lobs it over. Samuel keeping up and doing well in this rally. Another down ball for Shafiq. This is the biggest lead that Samuels had. And he is determined not to let it go to waste. He is making Shafiq work hard. Oh, just. Ah, oh, disappointing. Okay. One six. It's a five point lead for Singapore at the moment. Yes, left. Shafi thought he was not in the way, but he was, so we've got to let. This game will be Samuels to lose as he takes the lead so far, seven to one. Buffett is not letting go though. Strong start. Some nice cross court action. It's 
Sam with another opportunity. Some fast returns here. Lobbing it over. Those lob shots giving them a little bit of time to reposition and replace. Not afford to let Shafik back in the game. He cannot. Because once Shafik goes on a roll, that's it. He charges. He's like a bull. He has his eyes on the target. And he races towards it. Making it very difficult for Samuel to get back in there, as we saw in that first game. A couple of beautifully placed slow shots there just at the forecourt. Two points. And it almost looks like the Malaysian is going to let him have this. And run him through in the fourth. Conserve the energy and go for it in that fourth game. Maybe, maybe that's the game plan at the moment. But it would be good to see Singapore at least get one game out of this. And potentially turn this around. But it looks a little tired. Singapore with the first lead here. Great job there by Samuel. In this men's semi-final match in the singles, 12-10, 11-6. Three eleven, Singapore getting their first game in the men's and women's singles, courtesy of Samuel Kang. And there were a couple of opportunities that could have gone the way of Mohammad Shafiq, but Singapore held out. Although the coach seems to be questioning what is going on with Shafiq at the moment. In this third game, Samuel started so strong. He was six points clear at the very start, not letting Shafiq get an edge in at all. But now it looks like Shafiq knows what he needs to do to 
get this back for Malaysia. If Malaysia wants a chance at a 1-2 for the men's singles, they are going to have to work hard. Shafiq is going to have to make sure he gets it through and books his spot in the next round. Two games to one. Come to serve in the fourth level. So this is the first time that we're running this through to the fourth game in the singles competition. Everything else has been played out. 3-0. And it's Shafiq who stakes his dominance. In this best of five game, all Shafiq needs is one more game under his belt to win this out. Oh, a stumble there. We'll see Malaysia three points clear of Singapore. A little bit of tussling there. Traffic patting Zemil on the back there as if to say, yep, good try. But not quite good enough. Out. And it's down and out for Samuel. Traffic is pulling away from Samuel at the moment. Although Samuel knows he needs to keep his head in the game. But definitely not with shots like that. Six left. Doing to Samuel what was done unto him in the third game. Question is, will Samuel be able to claw one back? like Shafiq had done to him. Yes, left. Left box. Six left. Left box. Six left. Shafiq. Four points away from wrapping this up. Some lovely strong shots there. Hard drives. Down towards the side. Oh, 
we're very close to the wall there. And they're so close, it's hard not to whack your racket against that side wall. There's a change in tempo. Samuel still going for it. And what is a very long rally here between the Malaysian and the Singaporean. Are we about to see it come to an end? No, we're not with that lob just over the back. Yes, let. And it's another let. down oh goodness me Samuel has his work cut out from him 8-0 now Shafiq just three points from wrapping up this match What a beautiful shot, sending Samuel running. Right box. Right box. Nine left. Nine left. Oscar. Oscar. Samuel hasn't had a say in at all in this game oh but he will with that one point he's got his toe in the game let's see if he can put himself back in it in entirety but not if he's sent running to and fro the way Shafiq has got him going at the moment. It's going to be a tall ask of Samuel, but he's going to give it his all here as we play for the final point between Malaysia and Singapore. And with that, you can see it on his face. He lost the third, but he... Wasn't going to let it get away. He was not going to let it get away in that fourth game. What an impressive match. 12-10, 11-6, 3-11, 11-1. And so it ends 3-1 with the Malaysian Mohammed Shafiq bin Mohammed Kamal booking a spot in the finals in the men's singles. And boy, did he earn it. He worked hard from the get-go, putting in the work in that first and second game. It was close in the first. Samuel really gave him a run for his money. But with hard shots like that, 
you knew it was only a matter of time before Shafiq closed it out. There were a couple of contested points. Samuel not happy with the results there. And in that third game, he really did give it everything he had for Singapore. He led six points to zero. But he wasn't able to hold out completely. Eventually closing out the third game. 11 to 3 to Singapore, but then it was all Shafiq in that fourth and final game. An impressive end, though, to that first semi final between Samuel Kung of Singapore and Mohamed Shafiq of Malaysia. So, one Malaysian through to the finals. Could the next Malaysian make it through as well? Ung Yen Yao going up against Robert Garcia of the Philippines. That match is taking place next in our second semi-final for the men's singles event coming up next. Don't go anywhere, guys. We're bringing you all the live action from the National Squash Center here at the Bukajalo Complex. The men in action for the second semi-final. That's coming up very, very soon. so that we can introduce our referees for this match. As I mentioned earlier, we're following the three referee system. Our center referee is Mohamed Arfan, an ASF referee from Singapore. Our right referee is Edgar Bellaver, a national referee from the Philippines. And our left referee is Samuel Chan, a national referee from Malaysia. And our sports fans would like to bring the players up in front. Coming in from the right side of the court, please welcome Andrew Garcia, Robert Andrew Garcia from the Philippines.
Robert Andrew Garcia of the Philippines is seated number three. His Philippines national ranking is number one. He has captured the Philippines squash national title on seven occasions. He has represented the Philippines in squash for the last 15 years. He turned professional less than a year ago and has already captured two professional titles. He enjoys traveling and playing on the professional circuit. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Philippines, Robert Andrew Garcia. Robert Garcia, age 31, won the brick and the bronze medal in the mixed doubles and the men's from the jumbo. The court, from Malaysia, Ng Ian Yao. 19 years old, the Malaysian, healing from Kuala Lumpur. So he's on home turf, already won gold in the men's doubles alongside Mohamed Shafiq. So we know what he's capable of. Ng Ian Yao is seated number one. His Malaysian national ranking is number three. His world ranking is 83. He was World Junior Champion in 2016 and hopes to become the world number one player in the not too distant future. His hope is to keep performing well and in the process inspire and motivate our next generation of Malaysian world beaters. Ladies and gentlemen, from Malaysia, Ng Ian Yao. He hopes to groom the next generation. He's only just part of this generation at 19 years old. Ladies and gentlemen, the team will be warming up in a few minutes before we start the match. So again, it was 3-0, 3-0. Ng Yin Yao beating Kajiro Tan of Singapore to book his spot in the semi-finals. And Robert beating Arnold from Thailand. Robert Garcia, definitely the more experienced player here on court at 31 years old. He is 12 years older than his opponent here today. Will that show? Well, we're about to find out. There was just five years difference between Mohamed Shafiq and Samuel Kung. But it was the Malaysian Shafiq who managed to edge out the Singaporean. Ng Yin Yao will bring youthful knees to this match. Of course, it's a very taxing sport on the knees. With all that lunging forward, the side-to-side -side motion, the spinning, the turning, the jumping around, and the reaching, it does take its toll. But this player right here, having represented the Philippines for the past 15 years now, will be looking to book his spot in the final. Which way is it going to go? We've got Malaysia in the orange and the Philippines in the red and black. Our officials sat in position, ready and waiting for these guys to finish their warm-up. Don't forget, we've got finals action taking place tomorrow. The singles finals will happen from 7 p.m. And you can catch all that action on Toggle. And if you're watching the squash, though, it means that you're missing out on today at the games. But you'll be able to catch reruns. Don't worry. And, of course, we'll bring you today at the games tomorrow and every night until the end of the games taking one hour to wrap up all of the action from the 29th SEA Games here in Kuala Lumpur.
Kuala Lumpur 2017 is what it's being hailed as. And Malaysia doing exceptionally well so far. Malaysia currently with 90 gold medals, bringing their total haul to 210 with 61 silver and 59 bronze. Vietnam sitting in second with 50 gold medals, Thailand 48, Singapore 47. Those are the top four countries. Singapore just behind Thailand at the moment. In terms of silver medals, Thailand has 67 to Singapore's 40 and 65 bronze to Singapore's 55. They have 38 more medals in total compared to the Singapore country. Indonesia currently with 31 gold medals sitting in fifth position. In sixth place, it's the Philippines with 19. Myanmar have seven. Laos with one. Cambodia also with one. Brunei and Timor-Leste yet to get their first gold medals, but Brunei do have four silver medals and seven bronze. Timor Leicester, though blessed, they only have 36 athletes taking part in these games, so it is always going to be tough if you don't have a large number of athletes to compete against the region's best. A very young nation, too. So, who should we be looking to to walk away as a winner in this match? Well, the Malaysians have been playing exceptionally well. Ng Yin Yao is ranked number three in Malaysia. Robert is Philippines' number one squash player. But we've already seen their number one women's player bow out to Malaysia in the second semi-final earlier on against Sivasangari Subramaniam. Sivasangari won that 3-0. 11-2, 11-5, So will it go the Nine. same way or will the Philippines be able to at least field one player in the singles finals? Well, we're about to find out. The warm-ups are now officially over as we decide who will be serving first. The racket head falling the way of the Malaysian. Making sure his sweatband is in position. Not going to run. The 19 year old. Ready to get into action. As of August 2017, Ng Ng Yao ranked 81st in the world, up from July's number 83. 29th Sea Games Kuala Lumpur 2017. And that is his best Men's ever showing. Semi-finals match. Ng Ng Yao of Malaysia to serve. Robert Andrew Garcia of Philippines to receive. Best of five games, Laval. In June 2017, he won. He was placed in the semi finals of the New Zealand International Classic. In May, he won the NT Open in Australia. One love. As he takes the first point. Down. Two love. Down by the Filipino. He won't want to make mistakes like that when going up against the Malaysian. A 
Errors like that will cost him. Nice hard drives from both these players now. Young is a lot more dominant in that centre tee. Rarely relinquishing that spot, but sending Robert all the way around the course at the moment. See how it's almost like he keeps one foot around the tee. Soft ball. Oh. Nice powerful return from Robert. Decision on the down call. Ball's down. Hand down. One, two. A lot of flair in own shots. His backhand steadying every single one of his Stroke shots. To Malik. Stroke to Malik. Hand down. 3-1. Now put this colliding with the side wall. Down. 4-1. Down. That's his third down so far. Five one. Some beautifully played shots. Courtesy of Un. As Robert just gets in the way of play. Good rhythm at the moment. From Yin, yeah. Stroke to Malaysia. One. Lovely change of pace there from the Malaysian. See, so volleys that last shot. Seven one. <laughs> Robert pacing himself. Hand out. Two seven. A 
now we see Robert attempting to keep place there in the tee. Made to work hard to get that ball. Stroke to Garcia. Three seven. Down. And down. Eight three. Three more points required by Ung to seal out this first game. Yes, left. Eight three. Down. That's five downs now. Nine three. Five points that have gone the way of Malaysia. Oh. oh. Nice attempt though, trying to smash it off the back wall. Head out. Four nine. No left. Hand out. Ten four. Ten four gimbal. Oh, brilliant return there from Ung, who is one point away from. Closing out this match, uh, with this game. And he is making Robert run all over. Couple of lobs. Nice change of tempo. But it seems like Robert has an answer every single time. Oh. And it's Ung who is doing the running around now. 5-10, gimbal. Not up, stop, stop. Decision on the not up call. Not up. 11 5. Game to earn, earn leads. One game to last. There we go. Malaysia taking that first game. Cool and calm as you like. 11 5 to Ung Yen Yao of Malaysia. Robert Garcia managing five points but five of those points for Ung a result of down balls from Robert and you could see for most of it Ung had a lot of control but just towards the end it was Robert who was making Ung run circles around him.
If Ung continues like this, we could be looking at an all Malaysia finals across the men's and women's competition. Hung leads one game to love. So the Malaysian will be focused on closing this out in three straight games. Robert Andrew Garcia here to disrupt that plan. One love. Going flying on the floor. To love. Nice. And out. One, two. Lovely footwork from Ung. Hand out three one. Great drives down the rail. Down. Such power from both of Four. these athletes. Drop to M. Five one. Oh, then crashing, but able to recover. Ung doing well to get back up on his feet there. Oh. Robert pushing Go. Ung back. To Garcia. Hand out. To five. Just above the line, they are cutting it close here. Oh. Oh, too high from Robert, sending it out. 
and sending another point the way and of down. Malaysia. 6-2. Yeah. Seven two. Oh, some lovely cross court action there from Ung. Stroke to Ung. He leads eight two by six points now. Down. Oh. Going and down. Away. Three. Let's go, Robert. You can hear the reassuring sounds there from Jamaica, cheering for Robert. She lost out to her Malaysian counterpart in the women's single semi-final two. She knows the position he's in. Garcia, you need to speed it up. Thank you. Foy. The play is fast and furious here in squash. Hand up. And that is the same Nine, four. between points as well. The judges won't stand for any dilly-dallying. Down. Ten, four, gimbal. One more point is all that's needed for Ung. Oh, but as he flies across the floor there. Find out. Five ten gimbal. It's enabling Six, ten, Robert people. with two more points. Oh, Robert is sending um lying across the court at the moment with his his controlled shots and has enabled him to reduce the deficit to just three points now could Robert get his head back in the game and walk away with this game there is a chance Hit 10, gimbal. And we'll need to keep his composure. Down. Oh. Down ball. Mm, this is where it gets interesting. Philippines now within Nine, one point ten, of Malaysia people. for this game. This is the fourth game ball point that we've had. And each one has gone the way of 
The Philippines has does this one as they now draw level. Ten all. Player must win by two points. The number one Philippine player putting in the work. Down. Ung will need to get this next point to close out this game. Oh. Yes, let. Eleven ten, Gimbal. Body clash. Allowing for a let. It's always so hard when you're both up close in the forecourt. Let's see if Ung has what it takes to close out this point. Robert not giving in at the moment. Oh! Stroke to Garcia. 11 11. Hand out, 11 all. Come on, Bert. Take this one. 11 all. Robert's point. Decision, no let. Hand out. Oh. No let, which means that the point goes to Malaysia. 12, 11, good ball. Here we go again. This is as close as it's going to get, but it goes the way of Malaysia as Ng um, Yen Yao closes out the second game. Had us on the edge of our seats there for a while. Robert Andrew Garcia giving the Malaysian a run from his money. 11 points he managed to rack up, but no match. And those final few points from Ung 13-11. We saw some beautiful points from Robert. He really managed to claw his way back. He was down 6-10 and he clawed his way back up to even out the scores. And it was point for point until they were at 11 apiece before Ung was able to pull away and close out that second game. The question is, does the 31-year-old Filipino have what it takes to go the distance if this comes down? To a five game match. Seconds. 
Game number three. Home leads two games to love. As we warm up the ball. Le ball. Down. One left. Starting as he means to continue. Oh, that's a soft little ball there. And now, decision on the not up call. Not up. Decision on the. You need three. Decision on all the pickups. The pickups, the front pickup on the left. Backhand. Ball's good. Pickups good. Hand out. One all. The first point contested by a Malaysian. And it's Robert who pulls ahead. Yes! Yes! Three one. The Filipino. It displaying his dominance here in this third game. We saw it go to four games in the first semi-final between Singapore and Malaysia. Will it go to four again? Two, three. Undoing everything he can to stop that from happening. Down. Three all. Thank you. And climbing back. Robert just losing that ball Four, three. and he's unraveling in this third game he needs to keep his composure and his wits about him if he wants to make his way through to that final match lob right over the back And it's another one for the Malaysian. 5-3. Ung is looking to close this one out. In prompt fashion. Not enough power behind that shot. He's failing to flick it up. And so, after coming from behind, Ung now doubling.
Down. Oh, down. Head down. Four, six. Malaysians have done very well in this competition so far. We've already got three golds. And mixed doubles, women's doubles, and men's doubles. Ng Ian Yao was part of that gold medal winning team in the men's doubles. And you can see why now. Watching the way he plays, can you imagine? The combination of him and Mohamed Shafiq. If you watch Shafiq in the first semi-final, you would know exactly what I mean. And it just hits the wall. No. That was a lucky shot for Ung. Um, Eight, four. Doubles his lead now. Stroke to Garcia. Hand out. Five eight. Malaysia just three points away from closing this out. Down. No, not going to do it with points like that. Oh, but now with an opportunity. He's just two points away from the Malaysian. Both of them going as hard yeah. as they can. But it's down and out. Hand out. 9-6. Oh. He will be frustrated with losing out on points like that because he's now put Malaysia within one point of booking his spot in the final. Ung keeping it nice and composed. Oh, the ball just dropping in, but Ung managed to get right back in there. And Ung is sending Robert flying across the court as he That's walks strong. away the winner of this semi-final it's going to be an all malaysian affair in the men's singles final for squash 11 5. look at the way he just controlled that ball sending robert flying into the corner to retrieve that ball it wasn't happening racket thrown to the floor it's going to be 1-2 for Malaysia in the men's and women's singles. Ung Yen Yao playing this out. 11-5, 13-11, 11-6. A great showing from the Filipino. But it just wasn't enough to seal out the Malaysian. Who will now go through and play against the man who played alongside him in the men's doubles but now this time they will be competing for each other against each other for that gold medal in the men's singles we can look forward to that action tomorrow from 7 p.m the women's singles it's going to be again an all malaysian final but this man in the orange here he will be playing just after the women He'd allowed the Filipino to get in some crucial points in that second game. But in the third, 
It was all about him and his ability. It was his to lose, and he didn't lose it at all. He was lucky with that shot, just getting in. And it was after that that Ung was able to send Robert Garcia flying for that final point. 13, 11, and 11, 6. And so the ladies, Rachel May Arnold, will go up against Steve Sangari in the women's final. And this is how the men's final looks like. It's going to be Ung Yen Yao going up against Mohamed Shafiq for the men's singles gold medal. But Malaysia guaranteed a 1-2 finish in both the men's and women's tournament here for the squash in the singles event. That means two more medals, two more gold medals that they can add to their already impressive tally that they have racked up here at the 29th edition of the Southeast Asian Games. They've already got 90 gold. Tomorrow, they will add two more to that impressive total. Make sure you join us for that action from 7 p.m. And don't forget, we've got all the action coming from the games on Toggle 1, 2, and 3, as well as on Octo Sports. Make sure you keep it right here. We've still got a few more days of competition left before we close out with the closing ceremony on Wednesday. And all the action is coming to you courtesy of MediaCorp. So keep it tuned right here for all the happenings as we follow Team Singapore and the rest of the athletes from across the region at Kuala Lumpur 2017. From the National Squash Center, we say goodnight, but we will see you tomorrow for plenty more action. Join us in the morning at 11.